Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, that's a nice fish. <laughs> oh, I knew that was going to get one. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Well, happy fall, y'all, and welcome to Retro Bassin. We are out on Lake Bass Trop, which is one of my favorite little lakes uh, just east of Austin, Texas. This is a lake that is packed with weeds and vegetation and really reminds me a lot of the old tidal Potomac, which I used to fish quite a bit as a kid. So we are in the fall transition today and I have not been on this lake in a hot minute but I imagine those bass are on the move. In fact, as I'm launching the boat here, I see a ton of little wolf packs of bass chasing bait even around the boat ramp. As is usually the case on Retro Bassin, I've got a boatload, and by that I mean a literal boatload of vintage and discontinued bass fishing lures. So we're gonna be fishing fast today around this little lake, hopefully get something on top water. I've got some spinner baits, I've got some crank baits, in preparation for today's trip, I was doing a little bit of surfing on the YouTube last night as I was sipping on a Milwaukee's Best Light. And two different videos that I kind of uh, tuned into had the same sort of message as it relates to fall transition. So the first one was one from Fluke Masson and another one from Tactical Bassin. And both of them said two things that kind of stuck with me. Uh, number one, when it comes to fall fishing, look for green. Especially on a lake like this with a ton of vegetation, probably 80 to 90% of it is going to be dying off. But if I can find some life as it relates to vegetation, well, then we might find some life as it relates to the bass around it. So I'm going to be looking for any pockets of green vegetation amongst the sea of just a bunch of dead stuff. The second thing those guys both said to look for were funnels. And basically, oh God, there's fish busting all over the place here. I got to hurry up with this intro. In the fall, bass, it's all about the bait fish, and they like to corral those bait fish, uh, sort of like a sheepdog with sheep. Find funnels, whether it's vegetation, banks, things like that, where the bass can corral that bait. I've got a few spots in mind as well, so that's kind of what I'm gonna be looking for now. Um, I'm gonna get out there quick because the bite is on. There's one. <laughs> well, that is not what I expected to be my first catch of the day on the old Whopper Stopper Throbber, a big old bluegill. <laughs> In fact, I don't think I've ever caught a bluegill on top water, so that's just odd. Um, got a couple good hooks in them, at least. <laughs> Poor guy. Well, there we go. Uh, nice little... <laughs> Retro perching. <laughs> we just pulled up to a little flat here. There are fish busting all over the place. It's a little bit hard to tell if these guys are bass or gar. I've noticed these Texas lakes have a ton of gar and they definitely bust pretty often as well. I think the gars tend to roll a little bit more and the bass tend to bust. Um, so I think these might be bass, but it definitely gets a little bit tricky, especially uh, if you see a little splash at a distance. I'm trying to cover water quick with this Lunker Lore spinnerbait. 
because I just don't know where these fish are. Oh, there's swirls all over the place. Oh, that's my lure. Ooh, hoo, hoo. <laughs> There's one. There's one. <laughs> the old sluggo. All right, come on, buddy. Oh, there he goes. All right, nice little bass on the old school six inch sluggo in one of my favorite old school patterns, the old blue shad. Wow, nice little fish. She came up pretty shallow. I was just fishing that thing on a slack line, sort of watching the line as this thing goes along, and I saw a little tick, and there he was. These little bass trap bass, they're awesome. They're really a nice, pretty green fish. I think it has to do with all the vegetation here. Um, let's let him go and get another one. So as you can see, guys, it's pretty calm out here. I was throwing a number of different uh, sort of search baits. I was throwing a crank bait, a spinner bait. Uh, I've even got a spoon tied on, but it's really calm. And I thought it might be best to do a little soft plastics to try to get as subtle of a presentation as I could. And that paid off. So I don't know the proper way to fish a sluggo. I'll kind of tell you what I do because I used to have a ton of problems hooking fish on this bait. I would sort of fish it on a tight line and try to feel them, and I just never seem to feel them at the right time to set the hook. What I do now with the Sluggo is I fish it on a super slack line, almost like jigging for rockfish slack. I jerk the rod tip, and then I let that line go slack. Now the one difference is I watch that line like a hawk, and the minute I see any little ticker moving with the line, I set the hook. And I think that I can get a fish, grab that bait, and move away from it, move toward me, even just sit there and I will see that line tick ever so slightly. And since I've been doing that, my hookup ratio has gone up significantly with this bait. Oh, I love this bait. Oh, there's one. Oh man. Oh, oh he's jumping. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Just lost him. Oh, bummer. That's a nice little fish. <laughs> That's all right. We're getting there. I think we're starting to figure something out about these bass drop bass today. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, especially for here. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> come on, buddy. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, <laughs> Look at that dude. Oh, man. He hit right in the back of that pocket. That is awesome. That is actually for this lake. Man, that is a nice, nice little bass drop bass. Awesome. Oh, that was really cool. We stuck him right in the top of the head. He was, he was not getting off. <laughs> Son. So here's what I'm talking about. Right up here, you can see the reeds kind of go along to the left, and there's a little pocket in there. 
if I was a bass trying to corral a bait fish, I would try to get it right up in there. And that's where I'm gonna to try to get the sluggo, if at all possible. All right, so my sluggo is just about toast. So this would be a good chance for me to show you kind of how I rig this thing. This is definitely one of the baits. When I first started fishing this as a kid, I would burn through a lot of these things because unless it's rigged perfectly straight, this thing does not swim very well at all. So the first thing that I'll do with the old school sluggo is I'll take the, uh, take the bait in my fingers and hold it sort of upright and I'll come into the head at about 90 degrees like this. I go in about, I would say, what is that, a quarter inch, and then I come straight out the bottom, and the key is to be right in the middle of the bait. Having that hook lined up in the middle of the bait is so important. From there, I will come in and I will work the bait all the way up to the hook. You know, sometimes I can, I will have this thing buried, other times I'll sort of have the, the knot exposed like this. So the next step, I will basically hold the bait up to the hook and sort of pre-measure where it's gonna punch through. If you rig the bait so that it is, let's say the hook's too far forward, it's gonna pull on the nose and it's gonna rip really quickly. If you do it too far back, the bait tends to bend and just not swim very nice. So having it rigged up so that basically all of the pull on this bait comes from the nose just ever so slightly and the hook rests in here. The second thing is to have the hook go across this plastic at 90 degrees and that's probably the hardest thing of all so i'm going to see where it's going to go through try to do this for the camera and then i'm going to rig it up again right in the center of the bait and then pop it through so it comes in theory in the center on the top 90 degrees how do we look not too bad <laughs> I think you had it for like five minutes. Oh man. <laughs> All right, there we go. Nice little schooling bass. So now if you guys could see that, but this guy, these guys were schooling right up ahead of me. I was working this bank, beating it pretty good. I had a couple of really nice hits right in these reeds, but I saw some fish jumping right out here and I thought it might be a little school of bass and it turns out that it in fact was. Another nice little sluggo fish. <laughs> Sweet. Ow! God. I swear these fish that live in the, uh, in the weeds are really, really sharp. This is like the perfect sluggo water here. Oh man. It's like almost so shallow and sort of... Oh! Oh god! Oh, there's a nice fish! Oh my gosh, that's a nice fish! Really nice fish. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Do not get off. Do not get off. Oh, get you in here. Get you in here. Yeah, you're not getting off. You're not getting off. Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> like I was saying, this is the perfect sluggo water. It's really shallow. There's a ton of just sort of pockets of vegetation that were kind of driving me nuts with most other lures that I was fishing. And it's a little bit too shallow for something with a weight. So sluggo, senko, either way would work. What I love about the sluggo is I can fish this area really quickly and find, oh, beautiful fish like that. Look at that guy. Oh man. So that is a pretty, pretty little fall fish. Oh man, on the sluggo, look at him. <laughs> awesome. Oh, oh, there's another fish. Oh man, get out of those reeds. Oh God, that's a nice fish. That's another nice fish. <laughs> oh, just farting around. Oh my goodness, what was I doing? Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Oh, come on, buddy. Oh, come on, buddy. 
<laughs> oh, it is a sluggo kind of day. You know, it kind of makes you wonder why I fish with other baits sometimes. This has always been one of my favorite baits. The nostalgia of when this thing came out. I remember being a kid in high school and it was all you could do to ride your bike to the local tackle shop and pick up, I think, a four or five pack with a single hook. Man, it was a hard bait to get back then. Uh, not so much now, but oh, look at that. Another beautiful little bass. Man, I don't think I'm gonna switch baits today, huh? Holy smokes. <laughs> All right, let's let this guy go. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Herb Reed. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, that's a nice fish. <laughs> oh, I knew that was going to get one. Oh my God, that's the big, that's a giant. Oh, that's a giant. Oh my God, that is a giant fish. Oh my God. Oh my God, come here, come here, buddy. Come here, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. Go, 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 go. Oh, that is how you get it done, son, on the sluggo. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, <laughs> that is definitely the nicest bass that I think I've caught on this particular body of water. Oh, that is a beautiful fish. That's probably what, a little three and a half pounder maybe? Um, oh man, he hit it before I even said this is gonna be a good cast. So that is crazy. Uh, he just destroyed this thing. What's kind of wild is I've seen some boats coming in here and they have not fished that long. So I don't know if they were having some challenges. Usually it's me that is kind of cutting bait early. But man, oh, look at that fish. <laughs> oh wow, let's let him go, huh? That is a beautiful, beautiful fish. Oh my goodness. Oh, there we go. This will get one. Oh, oh there's one. <laughs> he ain't quite as big as the last one, but... <laughs> These are still biting. Woo! <laughs> now that is more like, oh jeez, he's so small I can't get my big thumb in his mouth. That is more like a retro bass and fish right there, huh? <laughs> uh, he felt bigger when he bit though, I gotta be honest. Oh yeah, oh yeah, get ready. Get you ready. Oh my gosh, oh my god, whoa, whoa, that guy smoked it. I don't know if he's big or not, but oh my goodness. <laughs> whoa. Oh. Well, that one's not exactly tournament legal. I belly hooked him, but another nice one as well. <laughs> Oh man, he just, um, whew, uh, we'll let him go as quick as possible. He just came across on it sideways and just, man, chomped on that little sluggo. So I did make one change to my sluggo rig. Early in the day, I'll show you this. I was kind of in a hurry to get this bait out and I had it rigged up with this standard offset worm hook. But what I was noticing is that I was ripping through a sluggo just about every fish. So I dug through my old tackle box and I found the official sluggo hooks. And this one from Lunker City called the Texposer. And it does a couple things. One, remember I said you gotta go perpendicular through that bait? Well, 
that is just totally straight. Really not good for almost any other bait other than a sluggo. But it allows you to rig it just perfect. Another thing that it does is notice how close to the top of the bait the hook is riding now. Before, it was actually much lower if I wanted it to swim straight. So now I can actually go up there and, like its name says, text pose it if I want. I just got lazy. I probably should have dug through the tackle box initially to find this, but, well, at least I got it now. As we're taking a little uh, Mikey Balls style sunblock break, I will show you some of the rods and lures that I had rigged up uh, for this little fall day. Again, it kind of started with some research I was doing last night on some other YouTubers, some other old school YouTubers about what kind of baits they like to fish in the fall. So I think I dug into one by Fluke Master, there was another one by Tactical Bassin, and I also dug into one by my new favorite YouTuber, Randy Blockett. So some of the baits that I've got rigged up, I'll show you real quick here. So first things first is the one that's been doing damage today, and it is this, the old school, I'm gonna try not to touch it with sunblock so I don't just ruin it, but old school Herbreed six inch sluggo. I know that the Zoom Fluke probably gets more press these days when it comes to fall bass, but this is by far my favorite soft jerk bait, the original, and man, it is doing work today. Another one of my confidence baits that I do fish pretty often, not quite windy enough today for me to really be a chunk in a wine in this thing, but it is the spinner bait. This is from Lunkalore, and this is the discontinued Vibration Rattler. What's unique about this bait is it's got a tube style bait, really natural shad bait fish profile, but it's got this crazy blade, and this thing totally vibrates. Also love to throw swim baits as often as possible, and I don't see a lot of folks throwing finesse swim baits these days. Well, here's one from Lunkalure as well. This is also in the Vibration Rattler line, and this is a cute little thing. This is a little, looks like a three and a half inch, probably a three eighths ounce swim bait, and if that sluggo bite wasn't really going off today, I'd probably throw in this thing a heck of a lot more. I also love crankbaits this time of year, and I've got one rigged up that I have not actually caught a fish on yet, but I cannot wait to, and that is uh, this offering from Rebel. This is called the Black Star. It is one of the most over-engineered baits that I've probably ever seen, uh, but in a really uh, good bait fish profile there. So. If I get out on some ledges, there's a couple spots on the way back to the marina, I might throw this thing a little bit more and maybe get one to bite. I did start off the morning throwing this guy a pretty good bit, uh, an old school topwater bait by the name of the Throbber. This is the discontinued bait from the Whopper Stopper. And what's crazy about this, and you can kind of see because it's clear, it's got a spring and a little BB in it. And listen to that thing. Of course, all I got on this today was that little panfish, but if the top water bite was going off a little bit more, uh, I might be throwing this thing. I'm working these weed lines. I might get out to the middle of this cove a little bit and see if I can get any of the school and bass to hit. I'll be throwing the slug, of course, but I might be throwing this guy a little bit more often. And with that, uh, let's try to get a few more bites. <laughs> you won't believe this, but that was a turtle. I have never seen a turtle hit a sluggo. Bizarre. <laughs> Even the turtles like sluggos. Well, Bass and Buds, we have just about run out the clock on today's little fishing excursion. Thanks for hanging in there. Definitely had a blast throwing some of these old school baits for fall bass. By the way, drop a comment down below. If I get on the water the next week or two, let me know what old school bait you'd like to see me throw and which one you think might be effective. Till next time, bass and buds, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'.